Well, calories in equals calories out is complete rubbish and what actually controls your weight. You've been told for years, it's simple, just eat less and move more. Well, if it were that simple, we wouldn't have a global obesity crisis and we wouldn't have doctors prescribing antidepressants to women who are just tired and emotional or tired and hormonal. Calories in equals calories out is not only wrong, it's really disrespectful. And I'm gonna prove why. By the end of this video, you are gonna understand why calorie counting doesn't work, especially in our midlife. What really controls your body weight, hint, it's hormonal, and how to reset your body's fat burning switch without starving and without obsessing. I'm Emma Voisey, I teach real health, and it's the kind that actually works in midlife, works in from your 50s onwards. And today we're gonna to blow up the biggest lie in weight loss history. Part one, the calorie myth. Calories in equals calories out. Sounds very sciencey, doesn't it? And so simple, it makes sense. Body fat equals calories in minus calories out. But the thing is, that's not a cause, that's a definition, big difference. Saying that weight gain is caused by too many calories is like saying a fire is caused by things being on fire. No shit, Sherlock. But what started the fire? Was it arson, faulty wiring, a pound of bacon left unattended? You're just describing the symptom rather than the cause. That's not a cause, it's just what it is. And it's circular logic, lazy, and frankly, really insulting, especially when it's used to blame people who've probably been calorie counting harder than an accountant counts, counts numbers in April since the 1980s, maybe since they were teenagers, maybe even earlier than that. Dr. Jason Fung nailed it when he said, when a doctor says it's just about calories, it's like telling an alcoholic just to drink less. It's not helpful, it's disrespectful, and it absolutely ignores the real cause. And I'm filming for you today in the Valley Dinkless, which is in the north of Andorra. Not super, super far north, but kind of halfway up, and it is so beautiful. If you look over here on the hill behind me, hill, the mountain behind me, you can still see there's just a couple of little tiny patches of snow left because it's nearly the middle of June. And if we go around this way, look how gorgeous that is. We just ate lunch at that little restaurant there. It's called La Ovea Negra, which means the black sheep. And I'm gonna take you over there in a minute and show you the river because it comes pouring down off that hill. Again, hill comes pouring down off that mountain. And in the winter time here, this would be very snowy and potentially cut off completely, but not for like days at a time. They're very efficient here with snow plows. And there's Mikey and my husband, who's bird watching. And look, somebody said to me the other day about grounding. I ground every day, but the water's icy cold, but it's just such a hot day, it doesn't matter. So part two, your body isn't a spreadsheet. Here's what they don't tell you. Your body isn't a calculator, it's a survival machine. Eat less, the thing is, your body doesn't just go or get busy burning fat and smiling politely. No, no way, of course it doesn't. It panics, slows metabolism, reduces your thyroid output. You get cold and tired and hangry and hungry and snappy and you crave a chocolate bar and a nap. This isn't failure, it's biology. Your body thinks it's in famine state and hits the brakes. So when you cut calories, your body cuts the spending and you don't lose fat, you lose faith. Eventually you lose the will. Then you blame yourself, same old, same old. You're too lazy, greedy, useless. You'll never be any good and you will never be slim. What a loser. How do I know this? It's because I've been there more times than I could count. Every time I looked in the mirror, I remind myself what a fat loser I was. Not helpful. Hello, eating disorder and goodbye 
self-esteem. So why exercise alone won't fix you, part three. Okay, so let's try the other side of that equation. Just burn more calories, move more. It's simple maths. Right, so you go for a run, you drag yourself out of bed at stupid o'clock in the morning for a month in January and pound the, oh, it's very loud here. Pound the wet freezing streets, even the dog gets depressed, it's vile, but you know it makes sense. You lift some weights, you go to the gym five times a week, you're so proud of yourself and your muscles are screaming like they just found out leg day comes with a sequel and by 4 p.m you're face deep in your grandkids tea time pizza slices why because your body's trying to replenish what it just lost this isn't weakness it's simple human physiology it's survival you move more you get hungrier you become less efficient you restrict food your metabolism becomes even more efficient it's not about willpower it never was as, as dr zoe harkham always says the human being, the human body isn't a closed system like a lab experiment or a combustion engine. It's open, it's adaptive, and it's regulated by hormones, especially insulin. Calories don't just go in and go out like, like coins in a vending machine. What your body does with these calories depends on your metabolic state, your hormonal balance, your nutrient status, and even your gut health. So two people can eat exactly the same meal and store or burn those calories completely differently. You're not broken, the system is. And potentially it's also damaging your mental health because you just feel like a failure all the time. It doesn't work because bodies aren't like that. That's why it doesn't work. It's not your fault. If you want fancy a longer hike, look, we can go up to Fonts del Travenc in 20 minutes and the Refugi Estanis de Jucla. One hour 40, maybe another day. <laughs> Mikey's found a stick. The flowers are beautiful, aren't they? Come on, mates. Part four. Why your hormones run the show, not maths. So what actually controls weight? So it's one simple word, insulin. The fat storage hormone. If your insulin is high, thanks to constantly eating snacks and ultra processed foods, your body will be stuck in storage mode. And potentially you've been doing this already for decades like I had. So even if you eat less, you can't burn the fat because insulin's literally locked the fridge. So Dr. Ben Bickman, he's a blood sugar whiz kid. He tells us you've got at least 175,000 calories in storage. That's like having a fully stocked fridge, freezer and pantry, but the kitchen door's locked. And meanwhile, you're licking rice cakes in the hallway. Your body's running on fumes because you can't access that energy. You, you feel weak. You're literally starving because you simply cannot tap into all that stored energy, that 175,000 calories that you've got stuffed away all over your body. So you're underpowered, you're ravenous, you've still got the cellulite and the shame spiral kicks in hard. So if you want fat loss, you have to lower the insulin first. That's the key. I recently published a video about this, about this exact subject, it's not about food calories that you've just eaten. It's about what's stored in the fat cells just waiting to be used. And the problem is if insulin stays high, that fat will stay locked in. And look at this view. I've climbed up here to show you. So there's a restaurant we had lunch, La Ovea Negra, the black sheep. There's the river and there's the Valley Dinklas. All the way down, back to the end, back towards 
Gran Valera, the ski area, and Canillo, and eventually Andorra La Vella and La Masana, where I live. Part five, the thermostat problem. Your body has a weight set point, like a thermostat. Go below it, below it, your hunger's gonna go up and your metabolism will drop or become, become more efficient, slow down. Go above it, your body might burn more if your hormones work properly. But if insulin's been high for too long, as it has in so many of us, sometimes for decades, or sometimes always, that thermostat gets reprogrammed and now your body defends a higher weight. It thinks that's your new normal. So it's not how do I eat less, it's how do I reset my thermostat. Look at that amazing waterfall. I climbed all the way up here so I could show you that because it's like, it's like mini Niagara. Fabulous. And what a beautiful day we have today. Don't we, Mikey? Where have you gone? Oh, there you are. <laughs> Mikey gets the best walks, and I do. Look, there's the snow, we're closer to it now. Little tiny patches, they're probably not that tiny when you get up to them. And before anybody panics, I haven't lost my rucksack. It's just down there somewhere. But because, because Andorra is such a peaceful, crime-free place, I don't have to worry about it. Well, I hope I don't, because it's got my phone in it. And the water, importantly. Look at the size of that huge rock behind me. Part six, how to reset your set point. It's getting a bit blowy here, but it's lovely because it's so hot. So you don't need more restriction. You need a reset. And here's how we're going to do that. Number one, cut the ultra processed foods. If it has 42 ingredients, it's not food. If it has six ingredients, I don't even consider that food either. Go simple, go whole, go single ingredients. Things you recognize, things that you would have in your own kitchen. Stop grazing. You're not you're not one of them. They're allowed to graze. You are not a mountain horse. You need to eat two or three proper meals and that's it. Have a gap between each episode and allow digestion to just do its thing unimpeded. Number three, prioritize protein. Aim for one gram per pound of ideal body weight or some experts, Dr. Georgia Ead is one of them, says 0.6 grams is sufficient, plenty. Others say one gram per pound of lean body mass, but in order to work that out, you need to know what your body fat percentage is. So based on my own experience, I feel if you're aiming for one gram per pound of body weight, but you sometimes don't always hit it, you'll prob you, know, you fall a little short, that's probably fine. You're probably in exactly the right ballpark. And if you are increasing protein and you're not used to eating it, as so many of us aren't, because we've under eaten for decades, just increase it gradually. Most of us uh, struggle when we try and just, if you just go from, I don't know, 20 grams of protein a day to suddenly you, you read that you have to eat 120 grams, you, it's really hard to do that straight off because your, your digestive juices are not set up to digest that much protein. So take it, increase slowly. Fat is fuel. This is the next one. Don't fear it. It keeps your insulin low and it keeps you full and satiated and fast occasionally. Give your body a break. Not to punish, but to retrain fat burning. Sleep, 
and move and get outside. Cortisol and insulin are best friends. Calm one, the other one will follow. This is what we do inside my new course, Maximum Fat Loss. We, start, we stopped fighting our biology and instead we learn exactly how to, to work with it. Hello you guys, are you friendly? Oh, so many flies. So many flies. Hello. Hello. These are real gorgeous wild horses, aren't they? They just live out here. Look at that. Beautiful. These are boys too. Hello you. <laughs> he says, don't come any closer. That's perfectly close enough. Let me scratch those flies off you. Oh, you'll be, oh you've got ticks on you as well, look. There we go. Ugh. Horrible little thing. Let's see if we can squash it. There it goes. That one won't be biting anybody else again anytime soon. Mikey grew up with horses, so he really likes them. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Come on. Part seven, the deeply dismissive doctor. Let's talk about that doctor. The one who looks you straight in the eye and says, just eat less and move more. As if you haven't been skipping meals and Googling miracle cabbage soup recipes since 2006, or living on low-fat shakes or meal replacement bars and hope. It's dismissive, it's demoralizing, and it's outdated, and it's keeping people sick. If your doctor isn't talking about insulin, hormones, circadian rhythm and muscle mass, and sunshine and hydration, he or she is not treating the cause. He's treating, or they're treating a spreadsheet which last time I checked didn't apply to me and it didn't apply, definitely didn't apply to you either. So just to sum up, you're not lazy. You're not broken. You've just been following broken advice. And now that you know the truth and you can, you can start writing a better story, one with butter, one with real food, one where you stop fearing hunger and start trusting your own body again. If you'd like to download my free health ma manifesto, I made it for people like you who are done with diet nonsense and want a plan that actually works in real life. And I've left a link below. And if you're ready to fix the root cause and finally stop playing these pointless calorie games, then check out my new three month course, Maximum Fat Loss. It's coming very soon. It's a full reset. No calorie counting, just satiating real food metabolic healing and momentum that lasts. I'm not kidding when I tell you it's the last plan you will ever need. Alternatively, my one-to-one -one three month coached course, Sweet Enough, you can contact me by my website and book yourself a free discovery call. I currently have, I think, four spaces left for this month. Because midlife is not the end of your story. It's the start of a far better one. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, you may also like one of these two next really appreciate you. Cheerio for now from the beautiful Valley Dinkless in the heart of Andorra. <laughs>